The World Health Organization has warned that more than half of Europeans could become infected with the Omicron variant within the next few weeks. Coronavirus infections across Europe are reaching record numbers. France has just seen a daily record of 368,000 infections. Italy has seen cases more than double in 24 hours. Now, Germany reported over 80,000 new COVID-19 infections on Wednesday. That is more in a single day than at any time during this pandemic. It comes as the government brings in even stricter rules for those who were unvaccinated. Let's bring in our chief political editor, Michelle Kufner. Now she's joining us from the German parliament. Hi, Michaela. Uh, the new German chancellor, Olaf Scholz, while we're talking right now, he is actually taking questions uh, from parliament for the first time. What can we expect to hear from him? Well, first of all, he's going to uh, make a short statement and that will, of course, be on the Omicron wave that is now hitting Germany for real with 80,000, a record number of daily infections recorded just today. Uh, but we also expect him to talk about uh, Russia and the Ukraine, uh, touching a base there with the hot button issue internationally. But no doubt uh, from what I've been hearing uh, talking to MPs here, he will face a lot of questions particularly on the government's stance uh, towards mandatory vaccinations. There the Chancellor has been clear, yet his own party hasn't put a proposal on the table. So once again, the government is perceived as debating for too long on something that is seen as an issue that needs to be discussed and decided on sooner rather than later, looking at those very Omicron figures coming in. Yeah, the government is facing some criticism, Michaela, for uh, not doing enough to uh, slow the spread of this Omicron wave. Tell us more about that. Yes, well, if you talk to politicians, they will more or less freely admit that somewhat uh, the fight against COVID fell between the cracks of the government handover from Angela Merkel to Olaf Scholz. Uh, he's now keen to deliver, to make clear that the Social Democrat-led uh, government uh, will now uh, take decisive action. That is making visiting a restaurant much more difficult now. But when you're talking to experts, they're saying that more contact restrictions will will be needed. And um, that's the big question here. Uh, will it be enough what's in place right now? The Conservative Angela Merkel's party is already calling uh, for an all-out pandemic scenario being called out and the legal implications that that would have, making it easier for states to implement much tougher uh, restrictions. That's a lot of political fighting going on here, as a lot of people are asking questions what the next concrete steps will be. Chance Mr. Schultz is due to meet with the state premiers again later this month. Do we have an idea, Michaela, what the government's strategy is for tackling the pandemic going forward? Well, it clearly is not a full on lockdown strategy. That is simply too unpopular here in Germany, despite. Uh, experts when you talk to them uh, calling for it. Um, it is a step-by-step -step strategy that he's aiming for here. At the same time, wanting to see mandatory vaccinations being put in place that will be put in place in February for those sensitive uh, jobs in the medical sector, uh, but still yet more debate down the line on the whole population potentially being mandated to get vaccinated. Our chief political editor, Michelle Kufner, in the parliament there. Thank you. Let's get some more perspective on the story now. We can speak to Rolf Alpweiler. He's a director of European Bioinformatics Institute and a pandemic advisor to the German government. Thank you very much for joining us here on DW. I want to ask you, first of all, about this warning from the World Health Organization that half of all Europeans could be infected in the next six to eight weeks. Can you put that into context for us? Does that mean that you know, the worst is still yet to come? Well, it Omicron is, is very fast spreading. That's, that's the fact. And we saw that already in other countries. You heard the numbers from France. I think we can learn a lot from the situation in the UK, where Omicron is already, um, uh, since a while, the, the dominating factor. And in this case, uh, in th this, this spread is, of course, very, very um, heartbreaking. But on the other hand, the good news is that vaccination was uh, 
pretty successful in a lot of countries and where it was successful and who are vaccinated and boosted, these people will be pretty well protected. I do want to ask you about that, however, because there are some concerns here in Germany, for example, about uh, some of the tests that are in circulation, also about breakthrough infections. So do we actually have the tools that we need to uh, break this Omicron wave? So, so we, we will have a huge wave of Omicron in Germany. It's unavoidable. The thing is that we need to spread it out as much as possible so that not too many people get infected too quickly at one time and that as many are vaccinated, fully vaccinated and boosted as possible because these ones are really very well protected. And we need to buy as much time to get as many back fully vaccinated and boosted as possible. Then it is not such a disaster as it may sound. There have been some predictions that we could soon uh, be treating COVID-19 as an endemic disease like uh, the flu season. Uh, do you believe that we will see that in the near future? Well, just because we wish that we can treat it like the flu season doesn't mean it will happen. Yeah? So it would be great if we come to such a stage. but. As long as not the whole world is vaccinated and we have um, COVID under control worldwide, there's always the danger of new variants coming up, which are more virulent and more dangerous as once before. Omicron is a good example. It's highly infectious, but it's relatively mild compared to Delta. So. But if you would combine the, the spread, speed of spread with Omicron, with the danger of Delta, hmm. or even danger, more dangerous, then we would be again back to a very different point. So this time, I think it's dangerous because it's quickly, but we have the tools in, hand, in our hands to, uh, mild, uh, to make the, the, the effects mild for the populations which are well protected. We'll have to leave it there. Rolf Abweiler, the director of the European Bioinformatics Institute and pandemic advisor to the German government, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Goodbye. Well, Omicron cases in Spain are soaring despite one of the highest vaccination rates in the EU. The government only recently reduced the quarantine period to seven days. But with long waiting times at family doctors, some patients are cutting their losses and heading straight to the hospital. And that is putting even more strain on the healthcare system there, as DW's Nicole Reese reports. Queuing at the health center. It's become standard for many in Spain in recent weeks. Most want to pick up sick notes because of a COVID infection. Some have unrelated emergencies. They would have otherwise have to wait too long for their doctor's appointment. Before it was better, you just went to your appointment. We had to see the doctor because of a medical issue other than COVID. And not all non-COVID medical issues can be given the required attention as quickly as they should. It was an emergency and we would have needed to wait for many more days. There is a perception of a risk that they cannot treat you properly because the system is overwhelmed. Maybe they need extra staff. I was here the other day and it was the same. There were a lot of people, although the queue moves quickly. We were proud thinking that our healthcare system is strong and good. But now this pandemic is showing us that we basically have nothing. Each wave of infections has pushed primary health care centers more to the limits, including this one here in Mostoles, near Madrid. Medics like Clara Abad Schilling say that the system was already struggling with a lack of additional staff and too little funding. The massive spread of the Omicron variant, however, has turned out to be the last straw. We should see around 35 patients per day. Now we're looking after 70, on some days even 90 patients, every day per doctor. It's really difficult to keep up when you're seeing that many patients. On many days, this really puts us in a situation of almost collapse and a state of exhaustion where we have difficulties making decisions. But that's what our work is like right now. 
Several health centers in the Madrid region confirmed that they've had to call the police as some of the waiting patients became verbally abusive. Some patients who don't get to see their family doctors in time are turning to hospitals like this one here behind me, putting more pressure on healthcare services that are also already overwhelmed. High vaccination rates and the Omicron variant mean that cases are milder now, but the high number of cases is also spiking the admissions in hospitals here. In the meantime, the Spanish government is finalizing plans to treat future COVID infections just like a regular flu. This means less tracking, less monitoring, but more projections in an attempt to transition from a pandemic to a situation where a disease is coming back, but is more predictable. That, however, will not happen before this sixth wave in Spain is over. And most family doctors here are not going to drop their demand for better work conditions and more funding to ensure proper service for their patients.